Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial on Ethernet IP from TR Electronic. Today's video we're going to focus on configuration of a linear encoder using our configuration assembly. We'll be going over how to change the direction and set the new zero point of the measuring system. We'll change the position and velocity output formats. And finally, how to change the total number of magnets that you're going to use in your application. The first thing you want to do is ensure that the device's EDS file has been registered in your RS Logix project. You have set an IP address to the device and successfully received positional data to your controller. If you haven't already had a chance to check out our other YouTube videos on Ethernet IP, I highly recommend that you go ahead and take a look. We've put together some very useful resources to help get you started. Let's begin by going into our controller tags and looking at the data members that make up our configuration assembly. The first member is our direction counting toggle, which sets the counting direction of the measuring system and will apply to all magnets being used on the device. If you refer to the manual, the default configuration will be set to zero, which makes the device increase count values when the magnet is moving away from the electronics end of the device. In order to reverse the direction so the count values increase while moving toward the electronics end of the device, you simply change the tag value to 1. In order to save the change to the device, you will need to do one of three things. The first option is to simply power cycle the device. After the boot sequence is finished, any parameter changes are saved into the device. The second is to inhibit and uninhibit the communication between the device and the controller from the module properties window. Thirdly, it is possible to reset the device using a class 3 explicit message in your logic. This is done in the configuration tab of a message instruction by selecting device reset from the service type drop down menu. It will auto-populate the remaining fields for you, but you must ensure to set the path to the device you want to reset in the Communications tab. Here we are able to see that our magnet position has changed to a negative number because the zero point of the linear is still set at the electronics end of the device. In order to set a new zero point to the other end of the device, we need to perform a preset to magnet 1. In this example, I'm going to be setting the magnet position to a value of 0, but you can use this method and substitute any number within the possible measuring range of your device. So for instance, if your device's measuring span is 500 millimeters long and comes set with 1 micrometer resolution, the maximum value that the device will count to is 500,000. See the datasheet or the device's label for these specs. Let's take a few moments to talk ladder logic. In my routine, I'm using an XIC input instruction to trigger a move instruction, which is taking the value from new linear preset 1 value and moving it into the message control source tag of the instruction. I've called that tag linear preset 1 value of a data type double integer, and I'll explain more in just a few moments. I like to use move instructions for demonstrations because it allows me to define a new desired preset value while I'm in an online state with my controller from the ladder logic routine window. You can skip this step and define the tag right from the controller tags if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Next we need to create a tag of a data type message and set that tag to the message instruction. Now we can click the configure box and define the instruction. Reference the manual for the correct instance, class, attribute, and source length because depending on what magnet number you are presetting, the attribute value will be different. We want to preset the value of magnet 1, so I've used hex 67. The next step is to set the communication path of the instruction to the device. If you're configuring multiple devices, ensure that you point the instruction to the correct one. The message instruction on its own will change the preset value, however it is not stored to the memory until the accept parameter message instruction is also performed. Let's go through that process step by step. Start by adding in a new empty rung. Bring in an XIC input instruction and a message instruction. Double click the question mark on the XIC and call it save toggle. Right click the tag name and select new save toggle. This will bring up the new tag window where you can ensure the data type is boolean and the scope is set correctly for the task or project you will execute. Now click create. 
Next, double click the question mark in the message control field of the message instruction and type accept parameter message. Right click the tag name and select new accept parameter message. Just like before, the new tag window will appear and it should have already defaulted the data type to message. Set your scope and click create. Now to configure the message instruction, click the box to the right of the new tag with the three dots. Reference the manual once more for the correct instance, class, attribute, and source length, but let's try this one together. Select service type set attribute single. Enter the attribute ID number of 112 decimal as a hexadecimal value. In this case, it is 70. Set the class to 23. Set the instance to 1. Click the new tag box and create a source tag. I'm calling mine accept parameter of an integer data type. Click create. Then select the tag you just created as your source. A source length of one byte is all that is needed. Lastly, set your communication path to the correct device. Click apply and OK. Go to your controller tags and find the accept parameter tag that you just created. You need to change this value to any value between 1 and 255. Once that is done, download the program to your controller and go online. Now move the magnet to the other end of the device, or wherever the new zero point will be, and go back to your ladder logic window. Toggle the right preset 1 XIC. You should see the message done bit go high, and if you reference your position value for magnet 1, it should now be 0. If it flutters like mine, it is because the linear is set to micrometer resolution and is picking up small movements that your eyes cannot see. The last step is to save that value to the device's memory by toggling the Save Toggle XIC. Once the done bit goes high on the message instruction, your new zero point will be stored in the device. In the event that you wanted to remove a stored preset value from the device's memory, you can simply change tag linear preset 1 value to negative 1. Then toggle the right preset 1 toggle, followed by the save toggle like we did in the previous example. The second member of the configuration assembly is position format. This parameter makes it possible to change the unit of measurement that is output from the device without the use of math functions or other scaling conversions. I mentioned earlier that our device was configured for micrometer resolution, however, not all applications require that fine of resolution. We can set the linear to output in millimeters and centimeters, but micrometers is the default unit of measurement. To change this, reference the device manual for the hexadecimal value that corresponds to the desired unit of measurement. For centimeters, it is 2202 hex, however, depending on your tag style and controller tags, it may need to be converted to a decimal number. Simply enter 8706 decimal and perform one of the reset features we covered earlier. Once the device connects to the controller again, you can reference the position value and see that it is now outputting in centimeters. The final feature to cover in this tutorial is setting the number of magnets. Most linear transducers will come pre-configured to function with just one magnet by default. In most cases, however, the device is capable of using up to three magnets within the same measuring span. To change the number of magnets is very simple, but we need to consider first how the device's connections have been set up in the device's module properties window. In an offline state, click the change box located under module definition. By widening the columns on the pop-up window, you can see that the EDS file has many predefined connections to choose from. Ensure that you select a connection that supports the number of magnets that you will be using. For instance, you can't select position value 1 connection and program the unit for 2 or even 3 magnets because the I.O. connections do not support that much data to be transmitted. For this example, I'm going to select preset value 1 to 3 plus status plus velocity which gives me 4 status bytes, 12 positional bytes, and 12 velocity bytes. To see how this input assembly data is mapped from the device, refer to chapter 7.3, Assembly, in the device manual. You will need to parse your data like I have done here using synchronous copy file functions.
Alternatively, you can change the data type of your connection to a double integer. By doing so, this will change the data size and mapping of your input data assembly members. Here you can see the order of those data members set as double integers, and I've labeled them in the description column. Once you have selected your connection type, go back online with the controller and navigate to your controller tags. Find your configuration assembly and look for the data member number of magnets. Simply enter 1, 2, or 3 for the number of magnets that you will be using and then perform one of the reset functions which we previously discussed. Once the device reconnects to the controller, the new number of magnets will be saved into the device and you can reference your input assembly data for your magnet position values. That's all we have time for today, and we thank you for watching. If you are looking for more information about our products and services, please visit us on the web at www.trelectronic.com. See you next time.